Okay, um, and just a quick walk through some of these works before the show opens, um, to give you a bit, of, a bit of a sense of what I'm trying to say through these pictures. Uh, I, mean, I think the overall thrust of this is that uh, these are some of the images and ideas I collected through my time on the wall and either walking it or revisiting it. And um, certainly when I started, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. Um, and I think that was quite nice because um, you know, I can start with a preconceived idea. Uh, but very quickly, I realised that there wasn't a lot of war left, particularly uh, when you walk through places like Newcastle, clearly. Um, but even in some of the remote parts of Cumbria, uh, there's just nothing to see apart from the land. And under that, it's clearly 2,000 year old worked stones <laughs> lying in a, in a jungle. I think that actually, what we need to do here with this remarkable. Um, bit of heritage is to, is to reconstruct it, uh, uh, which is an ironic metaphor for you know, how we let society go, let the wall go to ruin. Um, and so the works in this exhibition are really summary pieces of those, um, of, of those issues along, along the wall where we've got um, juxtaposed quite often the old with the new. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a sense of um, the the erosion of the antiquity over over the years. Uh, so this piece here, for example, uh, which I've not been to before, just into Northumberland, Caulfield Crags. Um, when I came across it, was a was a revelation and a shock because there's a you walk over from Northumberland, and there's an extraordinary fort or remains of a fort, uh, and then a mound and. And clearly that mound continued, uh, but the uh, quarrymen uh, back in the 50s, I think, decided to quarry this. And they wanted to quarry a huge swathe of the Roman wall territory uh, at that time. And they literally cut into this uh, wall of the lake here, created by the, the, the depth of the quarry. And so it just literally disappears off a cliff face. And I, I just learned, like the metaphor for uh, perhaps how, how the wall itself has disappeared off the cliff edge, uh, with the wall just, just disappearing into nothing, and the, the memory of the fort, but also menacingly uh, the memory of a, of a, of a digger, uh, or a, um, uh, a, a destruction machine waiting playfully around the corner from, um, from the remains of the fort, just waiting to, to, to move in, metaphorically destroy it.
piece, and it's it's a it's a it's a kind of desolate um, uh, view of how the how the war has been treated then and uh, and, and now. This uh, piece here is um, yeah, it's um, it's a Roman it's a Roman fort, um, and it's uh, one one that I came across on on on, on the walk, and uh, they they were literally just mounds uh, on this plateau. Uh, where clearly underneath there are the foundations or the footings or the, uh, the, the remaining stones of the fort, quite important fort. And uh, next door is a, is a farm, a working farm which has clearly been built out of the, the fort, uh, which I, yeah, I guess is understandable <laughs> in, in its time. But I thought it was ironic really that you know, we have an ancient monument that's uh, you know, been, been reused, classic case of. Uh, Recycling. Um, so what I wanted to do here was create a piece which had initially the farm in the background, quite quite strongly drawn, uh, strongly drawn. Sorry, uh, the ghost of this this fort uh, in the foreground. But then I again used a, a Nash uh, piece from the Second World War, uh, which was the painting he did of uh, the crossing of the Rhine into Germany and, and mm. smoke coming from uh, the, the German towns that were being bombed. And so this sense of um, some kind of aerial bombardment mm. um, really to destroy the fort, uh, which you know, took place over hundreds of years, but in this case taking place over a very short space of time with, with Hadrian. Um, so this is, this is a um, draw from a, a bust of Hadrian right. looking over, um, quite menacing, looking over his uh, destruction. And underneath here we've got a series of death masks, Roman death masks. Right. Which I've copied from the Museum of Antiquities in Newcastle. And it's uh, these here, which I think is one of the most, for me, one of the most complete pieces that I've done uh, in this show. And I think, that, I mean, I think overall the whole body of work for me was very satisfying, and uh, and I feel that I've finished and done my job creatively. And in terms of my art, it's you know, certainly some of the most uh, interesting and satisfying and important work I've ever done, I think. Uh, this was the first piece I did uh, when I got back from my sketches, which is uh, heading in the wall, heading on the wall over in, towards Newcastle, uh, where, again, we've got a village um, that looks like it's been built out of Roman stones, mm. and we've got the, the remnants of the wall disappearing into nothing. Uh, in this place there was a Roman fort and and so there's a sketch of the, the wall, there's the ghost of the wall that was there before uh, with a, a ground plan of, of the fort that was there uh, taken from, from records. Um, we have a, a ditch, uh, it's been inverted but there's a, there's a ditch and there's a banner uh, both on their respective sides and uh, there is some text in relation to uh, the fact that um, at some stage, um, I think Americans were, were, were planning to buy bits of the wall and ship them back over to the States, and they probably would have restored it. The other piece here is, is in Cambridge, by Russell Solway. Um, I read very, very early, even though I finished at this point, I read very early on that in Bonus and Solway there's a um, there's a plinth in a house which is a an altar stone uh, mm. from the Roman fort at uh, Bonus and Solway. There's a, a large Roman fort there. In fact, there's very little that remains of very little that remains of, of either the wall or the fort. Um, it's all been built over, and even when the wall disappears out of the village, it's, 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 it, you know, it isn't recognised. It's not marked. You can't walk it. Mm. Um, so what I've done is I've created a, a painting of a subject that I've previously visited, this mm. town, this village, which I particularly like. Um, but what I've done is in, in, in the shadow of this, this pub here, I've recreated the, the Latin uh, that was on the, um, on the altar stone. Mm. Um, so that there's a metaphor there for you know, how, how that is embedded somewhere in, in one of the houses. Mm and how they again have recycled these, these precious ob objects into their own into their own homes. And this piece here is uh, I, I visited um, 
most of the museums in relation to uh, the war, either in Newcastle or Carlisle, are en route. Uh, I spent some time in the Museum of Antiquities in Newcastle and I saw there something interesting. I, I saw a jumble of artifacts and, and pieces of wall and frescoes and sculptures and altar stones uh, in this space dedicated to the wall itself. Uh, but in a larger museum, the next door had dinosaurs and hmm. upstairs had Egyptian mummies. But the idea of, of, of using one of those frescoes, uh, which was a, uh, a relief carving of Venus and her maids, uh, washing her hair, I think, uh, but um, putting her in a prison, which is a, obviously a metaphor for being stuck in the museum, uh, when actually, possibly, you know, they should be restored to, to, to a place closer to where they originally should have been. Uh, this is a, um, a painting of um, part of the wall um, near uh, Burnett and Solway. It's, it's Bastard Hill, which is a, a hill built on a, um, a village, built on a hill above a floodplain where the Solway floods. So, so very wise, and below that, the wall did run. Uh, the wall isn't there anymore, so I've, I've, I've recreated it and I put the village on a slightly bigger hill. And so I've juxtaposed those um, quite quite grand Victorian uh, Georgian houses with a, uh, the ghost of a, a wall in the foreground. And again, I suspect that quite a few of those houses were built using the stone from the wall. This is um, a piece that I developed from the start of my journey. Uh, you come out of the metro uh, in Wall's End, you walk down the road to try and find where the wall started and fought. And the first thing is that I found it very difficult to, to find you know, where, where this was, this 2,000 year old monument, where did it, where did it start? Uh, and then when I did come across it, it looked like a, like a kind of a, a bit of a wasteland, a bit of a football field. Uh, there's a shipyard there, lots of cranes, lots of industry, and a quite an imposing visitor centre and viewing platform. Um, but, but actually, in terms of the wall itself and the force that was there, that was important, relatively little um, has been preserved. Um, and that, that wasn't a great start <laughs> to my journey in a way. It was quite, quite shocking. Uh, it was a, a cold October morning, and uh, maybe, maybe the, uh, the elements were against me, but it, it, it was a a harsh reality to, to, the, to the fact that there's very little left. Um, so I wanted to create a piece where playfully the, uh, the, the, the Swan Hunter cranes rebuild uh, the, the wall and the fort. Uh, these pieces of wall here um, have been recreated down that way, uh, but, but not using original stones. It doesn't look quite, quite so, so real. Um, there's a, a grand plan of the fort itself, got a grand fort, um, and again I refer to Hunter Davis in his 1970s work where he wrote at the time about the wall then that today there is not a scrap of the fort left and I wouldn't advise anyone to try and look for it either. It was a nice and shocking bit of 